Welcome to this video tutorial on how to create layout pages within Rhino. In this video, I'm going to be using this 3D model here to create a series of 2D drawings which we're then going to be adding on to a layout page in Rhino. On this page, we're going to be adding line weights and annotations to highlight the scheme and showcase some of the details within these drawings. Now, for this particular exercise, I've already taken a series of 2D drawings from this model, which we can see in the top view here. These are just made using the Make2D function, and I've taken a plan, elevation, section, and also a 3D view of this model. As a quick recap on how that works, to use Make2D, we just need to select our 3D model, type in Make2D, and this 2D drawing option dialog box will come up. Within this, I'm going to make sure that I maintain the source layers. This is really key for when we add line weights to our drawing later on as it will allow all the layers we use to model the 3D model within, they will be retained in our Make 2D. So I can then add a layer specifically for the kind of walls or a line weight specifically for the ground, for example. Another useful thing is the clipping plane intersection we want to make sure we have, and sometimes I can have the viewport rectangle. This isn't so important in this case. Then just hit OK, and you'll see that your 2D drawing folds out next to the 3D model. This will only be visible clearly in the top view as it will be flat to the surface of the drawing, like so. So that's how you create these series of 2D drawings, and I created these from the particular viewports, i.e. the front and the right-hand side for this kind of elevation plan and section view. Now we've got our 2D drawings, we're now going to set up our layout page. To do this, in Windows we can go down and click on the plus tab down here in Mac you might find it at the top next to your kind of perspective top front and right views if we click that little plus option we have the option of creating a new layout and I'm going to click that here within this we're going to give this a name I'm just going to call this a1 drawing for now we're going to set the printer as Rhino PDF because that will allow us to print or export it as a PDF at the end and we're going to set the size in this case to a1 I'm going to do mine as a landscape page, but you can do yours as a portrait if that's more suitable for your scheme. For the initial detail count, I'm going to set this as one for now, but we're going to add a few more of these later, and I'll go through what those are in a minute. So once we've set those, we're going to hit OK, and there we've got our layout page. And you'll see now we've skipped from the perspective tab onto this page two. We can rename this as kind of A1 drawing, like so. And you can see here that within this page, I can see all the pieces of my model. I've got my 3D model here, I've got those two 3D views I got, and I've got my elevation and plan drawings there. Now, what this is doing is it's essentially giving us a window into our main model view, but it's laying it out on an A1 page, and this size here represents our A1 page. If you decide later on that you want to change the page size, you can always do this by right-clicking on your page here, going to Layout Properties, and changing the size in there. Now for this, I actually only want to focus on a few of these drawings at a time, and at the moment it's trying to capture all of them within this frame. We can actually skip into the model view by double clicking within this frame here. So if we double click, you'll see that the color goes a kind of darker gray to represent that we're in the model view. And I can now zoom in and out of some of the pieces in this view. For example, the 3D view there. If I then double click again, we go back to our drawing or layout page, and when I zoom, I'm actually zooming in and out of the page. So this is a kind of really important distinction to make, being in the layout page and being in the model. And that's just double clicking to go from one to the other. A good way to check this is if you're in the layout page, it will give the name of the layout page up here. If we're in the model, it will say we're in the layout page, but within that, we're in this kind of detailed top view. We're in that kind of model view as well. So that's the distinction between the two. Now, for this particular drawing, I want to set up a series of these windows to show different parts of the scheme and different drawings I've exported. One of these is going to be this 3D view, and I'm actually going to make it a little bit smaller. And we're going to do that just by taking this detail view or the window, taking these dots and just scaling them in, and I'm going to make it bit smaller in the corner there for now. Once I've done that I'm going to double click in that view and I'm going to resize my 3D view to kind of fit that window. Something like this for now. Now we've got our kind of 3D view and I want that to be a little kind of icon in the corner of this drawing. I'm now going to set up my plan sections and elevations here and I want those to be to scale. 
Now, if you want to make more detail views, you can do this just by going up to the drafting tab here. If you click on your layout drawing, this usually opens up as a default, but if not, you can click on drafting up at the top, and we're gonna to go to this icon here to add a detail view. This will allow us to draw out a new rectangle, and then again, it will try and capture everything within that window. Now, what I'm gonna do is let's zoom in on the plan here. Now we've got it and actually with this I want to set it at a particular scale. We can do this by clicking on our detail window like so, going to the properties menu and here we have a scale value. Now this is given as one millimeter on the page, i.e. one millimeter on my detail page equals a set amount in your model. Now this requires a little bit of maths to work out what scale you're actually at but as an example if we did one and one this would actually set us at a 1 to 1,000 scale. The reason I know that is because a millimetre is 1,000th of a metre, and it's saying 1 millimetre is the page size and 1 metre is the model size. So we know that this is 1 to 1,000 because for every metre in my model, it will appear as 1 millimetre on the page. Now, if you want to make this into a kind of 1 to 100, for example, we can just add a zero onto that millimetres and that will make it a 1 to 100 scale because 10 millimeters is 100 of a meter, 100th of a meter. So you can just do kind of simple maths, but if you start at 1 and 1, it's a lot easier, and then you just multiply up to work out the kind of scale you need. So I go from 1 to 1,000 to 1 to 100, and that's kind of the right size for this particular page. So I'm going to keep my plan drawing at 1 to 100. Now I also want to get my elevation in here. This time I'm actually just going to take this frame I'm just going to copy this window just using the copy tool and then within there we're going to double click and we're going to pan along just holding the right click mouse button to find my elevation and I'm going to get that below there. I also want my section so we're going to do the same use that copy tool which can be found here copy it along double click this time I don't really know where the section is I'm going to have to zoom out there it is there zoom back in Make sure once you do that, you just go back to the scale and make sure that's correct. Now it's also 1 to 100. I know it's kind of 0 0.1 there, but that's actually the same as doing this as well. So there we go. So now we've got my plan, my elevation and my section all in this particular model. You might want to kind of resize your frame slightly to fit in as well on that page. Now what I want to do is I actually want to kind of lay these out so these line up and correspond to one another. I want my plan to correspond to my elevation and my elevation to correspond to my section. So to do this, we can actually select the whole frame. I'm going to use the move tool here and I'm going to line up some key parts of the model. So we've got this kind of edge piece and I know this is the sort of same as this element there. So I'm just snapping it onto one another like so. And then I'm just going to move them apart just using the gumball. And now I know that these pieces will all nicely line up. We can do the same with my section here. Use the move tool, line up these key elements, and then just move them away from one another. And that will mean that kind of all my lines in there nicely line up together. And let's just resize these boxes slightly, just so they fit a little bit better on the page. Now that we've laid out all our drawings, we're gonna to start to add some line weights and color to this drawing. To do this, we're gonna go into our layers and we're going to start to play around with this print color and print width. This will determine the color and width of the final lines when our drawing is printed out. Now in here, all my lines that I've got on this page so far can be found in the Make 2D layer. We can see that by turning this on and off. And within that, we've got our kind of curves and we've got our clipping planes. So our curves are any of the lines that aren't being clipped and the clipping planes are technically our section line in this particular drawing. Now you'll see the colours at the moment are representative of the original layers they were made in. So our walls are red, timbers blue, etc. But if we want to change that, we can actually go into the print colour here and start to tweak some of these colours and some of these widths to determine what the drawing will look like when it's finally printed. If we start with the walls here, you can see that in my visible curve walls, and if I turn that on and off, I can see which ones those are in the drawing. These are currently red. But if I go to the print color, I can click on this diamond and I can change it. And in this case, I'm going to make it into a kind of blue tone there. Now, when I hit OK, you might notice that the drawing doesn't actually change. The kind of image here is still red for the walls, even though I've changed that print color to blue. 
The reason for this is because we don't have the print display turned on and it's really important when you set up your print color and print width that you have your print display turned on so you can see what the drawing looks like when it's printed. To do that we can type in print display just in the command line up here and where it says state next to the print display we're going to click on that and click on here and that will turn it from off to on. By default it is always turned off so it's always good to make sure when you're working in drawings like this you turn it on and then we hit enter. You'll notice now that my walls have now gone blue to represent that print color and we can tweak that to any color we wanted and they'll now change. So we now have control over the color of the objects in our kind of print layer. You'll notice that even though I've turned it blue here if I go back to my drawing and find it there you'll see it's still red. This is because we're in the model view here and we're seeing everything based upon the color of the layer but when we're in my layout view we've got the print display turned on and it's kind of turned to the color of the print i.e the blue here so what i'm going to do is let's just go through these and we're going to turn these all to this lighter shade of blue here so just quickly flicking through and turning those to a light blue like so you'll notice that my section line is still colored because that's actually contained in this clipping plane intersection and for this one, I'm actually going to make this a darker blue in this case, so we can slightly see it a little bit more than our kind of lighter blue line there. Now, as well as this, we can also start to play around with the print width, which is the kind of thickness of this line. Now for this, I'm going to go for the walls. Let's go for a kind of 0.3 thickness, so slightly thicker. You can kind of see it there. For the timber, let's go 0.18 like so. For the glass, let's make a kind of hairline, so it's going to be really thin, or maybe a 0.13. And for the grass bank, which is the kind of thicker piece, let's do a 0.5, like so. And you can see here, now we've got our kind of line weights linked to this drawing. You'll notice that my section line hasn't got line weights yet, so actually I'm going to go down here, and we're just going to give a kind of one section line to all of these. Now these numbers kind of correspond with millimeters on the page so one is one millimeter thick and the kind of naught points are kind of 0.18 millimeter or 0.3 millimeters or so so you can play around with those depending on how thick or how thin you want the lines but now you can see that we've now got kind of line weights on our drawing we've got a kind of thicker line for the walls thinner line for the timber and a nice kind of thick line for the section so our drawing is starting to come to life a little bit what I'm going to do from here is I'm actually going to start to annotate this and add a few extra details onto the rest of my layout page. At the moment we've got these kind of big red floating boxes and I don't want to see these on the final drawing. So what I'm going to do is we're going to select those and you'll see here I've made a new series of layout layers. Now these are going to be for layers that are kind of containing bits of drawing on this layout page. And for these boxes I don't want these to print out so I've actually created this guide layer here which is set to a print width of no print. This means that when I print it, it's not gonna be visible. So it will be a kind of invisible layer on the options. So we can select our boxes, go to our properties menu here, change the layer, and we're just gonna change that to the guide layer, that bright green, so that's not gonna print. Now what I also want to do, I want to create a little kind of border for my drawing. So I'm gonna do that just by kind of creating a rectangle over here, and I'm doing this in the border layer. And then we're going to set that and we're just going to offset it by 10 mil like so. So we've got a nice little draw border to our drawing there. For the print color for this, I'm actually going to set this to a sort of gray tone because I think it's a little bit more interesting than black. And same with these kind of other layers here, we'll set these all to gray. So any annotations we do are also set to a gray tone. Now in here you might also want to have some dotted lines that connect up your kind of plan and section. So I've got a kind of dotted layer here and we're going to draw that just using the line tool just to connect up some of these pieces. Now you'll notice when I'm doing this they're not actually dotted lines in this case. They're just a sort of straight line. But once we draw them what we can do is we can actually take the line we've got here go to the layer, the dotted layer on, and look at this line type option. In here it's set to continuous at the moment, but I can click on that continuous and we can change it to a dashed line, like so. You can actually make any kind of dashed line you want just by going to the file, properties, go to the line types here, and then we can add new lines in 
using the add button and the way this works is you can see if I click on this hidden line the pattern is 2 comma 2 and this refers to the line or the dash and then the sort of space in between them so if we want a thicker line we do 5 comma 5 that means a 5 millimeter line followed by a 5 millimeter space and on and on so if I want to make a new one we're going to go 1 comma 1 and that will do a 1 millimeter line 1 millimeter space so depending on how you want your kind of dotted line spaced out we can draw that in different ways and I'm just going to continue let's connect this we'll also connect these pieces so we can read the sort of relative heights here of these elements as well so now we started to add a few kind of dotted lines onto the piece. It might also be that you want to add a few dimensions. We can do that from the drafting tab here. And we've got a series of sort of dimension tabs there. Now I usually use the aligned dimensions and we can use this just to kind of measure maybe some key distances in the drawing like so. We might want to kind of pick out a few key elements in here. Maybe some heights of rooms as well. Or kind of relative heights of the entire structure like so now you'll notice that at the moment they're coming through as a kind of quite a large number in millimeters and they've got these kind of little ticks on and they're kind of this sort of size now the way that these annotations display are all based on your kind of annotation styles and this can actually be found if we select one of them go to the properties you can see that the style at the moment is set to this default 01 now we can actually make our own annotation styles just by going to file properties again and annotation styles and you can see here we've got all the different styles we've made now if i select that default 01 and we can drop down here and select it there you'll see that it comes with its own series of kind of options we can pick so we can go into font i can change the font size the font type so if we wanted a different kind of font here maybe we'll go for kind of calibri there we can set that we can set the text alignment, we can set the dimensions, you can see there's so many different settings we've here, got here, we've got kind of different arrowheads, different dot sizes. One other kind of useful one is the length units, that at the moment you'll see mine's going kind of 0 0.001. Um, I actually just want this to set to zero decimal places, so it's just in millimetres. And we can also round it up if we want to as well. So you have a lot of options here on how these units are displayed. And then once you're happy with that, you can hit OK. And you'll notice that my dimensions have now changed based upon those unit settings. So really helpful there to allow us to kind of be very particular about how our dimensions are displayed. And you'll notice that all of them change, which is useful. So we can actually add them all in. And then if you want to change any key features, you can go back edit the style and it changes for all the rest of them in the drawing. As well as that we also have kind of leaders that we can add. These are really useful for if you wanted to kind of highlight or annotate any particular features. So let's say this window here I wanted to annotate. We can add that in and then we can give it a name window like so and there we've got our kind of window piece. Usually when using these leaders I'll make one and then I'll actually copy it for the next piece because I quite like all my leaders to have the same angle of this line just to make it look a little bit neater and then we can go in and rename it like so and you can actually kind of move the pieces along if you want to as well so and you can kind of copy those around to other places so we can really quickly just start to kind of build the drawing up add different annotations to it and start to kind of label it in this way so that was just a quick video tutorial on how you might start to set up a layout page, add in line weights, add in kind of thicknesses, add in color and also annotations onto this page. Once you're happy with the final layout, all we need to do now is print the page to a PDF. And this can be done just by going to file and print there. You'll see in the print setup, it will ask you what size page you want, what kind of orientation you want the page to be. Just make sure that this matches the original setup you did, which was A1 in my case. And we always want a vector output for this. Then just hit print and you can save it as a PDF from there. If you're on Mac, the option might be at the bottom of the print file just to click to save to PDF. We can save it here like so. 
So that was just a quick video tutorial going through how to use layout pages in Rhino. I hope you found this video helpful and if you want to watch any other videos on setting up drawings or renderings in Rhino or V-Ray, please check out the videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.